Welcome to another LOFA training video. My name is Michelle Miller and I'm the technical support technician here. We're going to go over the basic functions of the CP750 Auto Start. So in order to get into the auto start parameters, you have to turn the key to the run position and hold down the far right button to get into the configuration menu. Just be mindful that um, you don't want to change any of the parameters for the CP750 in auto start mode due to the fact that the engine might start if a start event is current. So you turn the key to the run position and the gauge page comes up and you want to hold down the far right button until the configuration menu comes up. You use the arrow down button to get to the auto start menu and use the arrow right button to get into that menu. Now you see there's two different options, mode and function. So let's just go over some of the different modes that we have available. There's dual switch, single switch, transducer, and transducer with backup floats. When using a dual switch, um, that's when you're using either two switches or two floats in order to create um, an auto start event. In single switch, you use one single switch or one float. And then transducer uses a automatic input with a 4 to 20 milliamp signal in order to start event. And the transducer with backup switches is basically the same thing as a transducer setup, but if the start event occurs using just the floats, then the panel is just going to pay attention to the floats until the transducer comes back online. Now with that, you have the different functions available and there's empty, which you would use for when you want to get a level below a specific target. And then you have fill when you want to get a level or pressure above a specific target. Then you have maintain out and that would be used when you're trying to maintain a level or pressure at or below a specific target. And then you have maintain in, which would be used if you're trying to maintain a level specific at or above a target. Okay, so the differences between dual floats and single um, floats is if you were to use single float and possibly say put it in a pond and say if it was a little windy, um, you'd probably hear your engine going on and off um, always starting and stopping, and starting and stopping due to using only one float um, due to the choppy waters. But if you were to place dual floats in a pond and you were to place one at a low level and another at a high level, um, as soon as the low level uh, float um, gets armed, then it's in its start event and uh, it'll wait for that high float to close as well in order to start an event. Um, when using the transducer um, versus the transducers with switch backup, that just depends on um, what application you're trying to use. If you're in fact going to need um, the backup switches in order to start your engine if something was to go wrong. So um, let's just look at where on the gauge page you'll find um, the containers for the float switches and the transducer. There's going to be two containers, one with two swinging arms and then uh, an empty one. So um, let's just say you have a dual flow um, operation um, and let's close the, the first float, the low float, and this is what it would look like. You should see that bottom arm swing up. That means that it's closed. Now let's close um, switch two or float two. And that's how, you would look, that's how it would look on the displays. Um, so say, for instance, if you had a dual switch empty, that would create a start event. Now, let's say if you're using a transducer, you see how the container is filling up as I'm using the simulator to send a 4 to 20 milliamp signal into the panel. And depending on what level you have set, that will be the highest that you can reach. Um, the default is 23.1 feet.